hello students in this second part of our chapter force and law of motion we'll discuss some of the numerical problems so first problem see which would require a greater force accelerating a 2 kg mass at 5 meter per second square or a 4 kg mass at 2 meter per second square we have to calculate the force in this case so the question is which one of the two 2 kg mass uh, to accelerate 5 meter per second square we need a greater force or to accelerate 4 kg mass at this rate needed a greater force so which of the two cases needs a greater force that we have to calculate suppose if you want to if you want to accelerate this 2 kg mass uh, 5 meter per second square you need how much force and suppose to this 4 kg mass if you want to give 2 meter per second square acceleration how much force do you need so the force amount of force we need to calculate in these two cases so first we'll write the given quantities we have a mass m is equal to 2 kg and acceleration 5 meter per second square in the first case here so we need to calculate the force and you know the force formula is force is equal to mass times acceleration so mass is 2 acceleration is 5 so you get the force 10 newton so as i know the force is newton so 10 newton so in the first case we have to apply 10 newton force now if i want to give 2 meter per second square acceleration to 4 kg mass how much force do we need to apply so force is equal to mass times acceleration so 4 into 2 is equal to 8 newton so in the second case we have to apply less force so that's the problem question number one so next question a force of 5 newton gives a mass m1 now this is unknown mass the mass is not known to us a force of 5 newton gives a mass m1 an acceleration of 10 meter per second square that means this 5 newton force gives a 10 meter per second square acceleration to this mass and mass m2 an acceleration of a 20 meter per second square what acceleration would it give if both the masses were tied together student here we are applying the same amount of force to two different masses m1 and m2 so in one of the case it gives an acceleration of a 10 meter per second square and in another case the same amount of force gives 20 meter per second square as acceleration so what acceleration would it give if both the masses were tied together now if these masses were tied together and the same amount of force is applied the same amount of 5 newton force is applied to this uh, tied body so what acceleration uh, would this combined body get so that's the question now the student first part of this question from the first part of this question it's very clear a 5 newton force gives 10 meter per second square acceleration to the first body and 20 meter per second square acceleration to the second body it means the first body is heavier that's why the acceleration is less this acceleration is less means the speed has changed slowly and in the second case the speed has changed uh, very fast it means the body's the body mass is big no the body mass is small because the body's mass is small the body has accelerated so if we combine both these bodies and the same amount of force is applied to the combined body this combined body gets how much acceleration that we have to calculate so before we calculate the combined acceleration so we need to find out the mass of the two body because the mass is not known to us so first case we have a force of 5 newton mass is suppose m1 and the body gets m1 body gets the acceleration 10 meter per second square so using the formula substituting we get the mass as 0.5 kg now in second case the same amount of force is applied on the second body m2 and the body gets the acceleration 20 meter per second square now again substituting in this formula and simplifying we get the mass 0.25 kg now the third case says if we combine both these bodies the total mass will be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 equals 0 0.75 kg now to this combined mass if the same amount of force that is of 5 newton is applied how much acceleration would this body get so substituting and simplifying we get the acceleration as 6.67 meter per second square so that's uh, about this problem hello students in this third part of our video lecture series we'll discuss one more problem which is based on the law of conservation of a mass let's read the problem first 
a bullet of mass 20 gram is horizontally fired with a velocity of 150 meter per second from a pistol of mass 2 kg. What is the recoil velocity of the pistol? Student, you know, when we fire the gun, what happens? The bullet, for, the bullet moves forward and the gun moves backward. Means we get a jerk on our shoulder, backward jerk. That's called recoil velocity. So with what velocity this gun or the pistol gets a, a backward jerk or our shoulder gets a backward jerk. That we have to calculate. A bullet of mass 20 gram is horizontally fired with a velocity of 150 meter per second from a pistol of mass 2 kg. So bullet's mass is known to us. Mass of pistol is also known to us. At what speed the bullet moves forward, that speed is also known to us. So what we have to calculate here, the recoil velocity of the pistol. That means with what velocity do we get the backward jerk? Or at what velocity the pistol moves backward? Or that recoil velocity of the pistol. So student here we have a two situation. Before firing the gun and after firing the gun. So before we start the problem, let's just uh, discuss or let's just write the given quantities. Student here we have written mass of a bullet as M1 which is 20 gram and mass of a pistol is 2 kg. So I have mentioned the velocity of a bullet as a U1 and V1. Student uh, because of a lack of space I have mentioned here U1 and V1 together. So U1 stands for the initial velocity. We are very much familiar from the last chapter and V1 is the final velocity. So Velocity of the gun, U2 and V2. So U1 is the initial velocity of the bullet. U2 is the initial velocity of the gun or the pistol. V1 is the final velocity of the bullet and V2 is the final velocity of the pistol. So now here we have a situation. This is before firing and this is after firing. Students, the mass will remain same before and after the firing. So it will remain same. M1 is 0 0.2, 0 0.02 kg. That's the mass of the uh, bullet. M2, that's the mass of the pistol. That's a 2 kg. So initially before firing, both our uh, pistol and uh, gun, uh, pistol and bullet are at rest. So their initial velocity is zero. Now when we <coughs> fire the gun, after firing the gun also the mass will remain same, the mass will not change. After firing the gun, what happens? The bullet moves forward with this speed, 150 meter per second. That's the final velocity of the bullet. Now we have to calculate the final velocity of the gun. That's the recoil velocity of the gun. So from the law of conservation of a ma momentum, it's known to us M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. So total momentum before the collision and total momentum after the collision should remain constant. That's what we have studied in the law of conservation of a, ma a momentum. Now student, all the data are available with us. So we'll simply substitute all these data and then simplify and we will get our required answers. So M1 is a 0 0.02 kg. U1 is a 0. That's a speed of the bullet before firing m2 that's a mass of the pistol and u2 that's the initial velocity of the pistol before firing now m1 again the mass of the bullet v1 that's the final velocity of the bullet after firing m2 that's mass of the pistol and v2 velocity of the or the recoil velocity of the gun this is what we want to calculate so now if we simplify this so this lhs will be zero if you simplify this you will get the product like this. So on simplifying, further simplifying, we get the value as a minus 1.5 meter per second square. Now student here, what does this minus sign indicates? Now see, let me just uh, show you the situation here. Suppose after the firing, what happens? The velocity, the bullet moves forward direction and the gun moves backward direction. Now this forward direction is always considered as a positive and the backward direction is considered as a negative. So here we have considered this one 150 with a plus 150 that means the forward direction so v2 that's the bullet uh, or, or uh, uh, velocity of the gun negative sign it means negative direction the gun will get a backward jerk or our shoulder will get a backward jerk or the recoil velocity of the gun will be in the backward direction the negative direction opposite direction so that's why this negative sign student let's discuss one more problem Let's read the problem first. A motor car is moving with a velocity of 108 km per hour and it takes 4 seconds to stop after the brakes are applied. Calculate the force exerted by the brakes on the motor car if it's 
if its mass along with the passenger is 1000 kg we have a motor car student the mass of the motor car along with the passenger sitting inside is 1000 kg this motor car is moving with the speed of 108 km per hour 108 km per hour that means the, this is the initial speed of this car and it takes 4 seconds to stop after the brakes are applied so we apply the brakes and it takes 4 seconds for this motor car to comes to rest so calculate the force exerted by the brake on the car so we have to calculate the force so let me just uh, write the given information first of all initial velocity is known to us it's a u 108 km per hour student now this speed is not in the si units so we have to convert this into si units so 108 multiplied by 1000 because i want to convert this into meter so 1 km equals 1000 meter and divided by 1 hr so 1 hr equals 3600 seconds so si unit of distance is meter and time is second so that's why we have converted this into si units so we have got the value 30 meter per second so it takes 4 seconds for this car to comes to rest time taken is 4 second and because the car comes to rest so final velocity is zero and what is the mass of this body mass of this car or the system it's a 1000 kg so force equals mass into acceleration student force equals mass into acceleration force equals mass into acceleration so mass is known to us acceleration is not there so we have to calculate the acceleration first so we know the formula to calculate the acceleration acceleration is equal to v minus u by t so substitute all the given quantities appropriate place and simplify you get the acceleration is minus 15 meter 15 by 2 meter per second square and again student you got the acceleration negative negative sign shows that the speed has reduced the speed has decreased so you know the acceleration you know the mass so substitute all these values and simplify and you will get the value minus 7500 newton again this minus sign shows the retarding force retarding force means the force which opposes the motion of the moving car that's why the car has comes come to rest so student i hope uh, you understood this two problems so with that we end today's discussion thank you